yeah. Okay. So monitoring. Um, yep. Sorry for the short distraction. So yep. we've already did a little bit about monitoring, but what are the main things we might want to watch and what does it mean? Yeah. So, so for the monitoring, like we already talked about like, okay, how can you watch the queue? How can you monitor it? And that's like monitoring basically in a work, like workflow type of a monitoring, like you monitor that is your work running and, and that sort of stuff. You're, you're monitoring your workflow and is it, is it going through correctly? And that's of course the important part that did you manage to do, did you manage to get your code running and is it running on there? Mm -hmm. But then there's the question of, okay, like, is it running like I expected? And is it using the resources like I expected? And for the first part, like, is it running as I expect it to run? The best way of monitoring is in your code to have monitoring output. So basically in your code, when there is a specific, like, step that it's doing, it's good idea that your code prints those outputs. It's good idea that your code know like tells uh, that that hey I'm doing this part. Maybe some timing information as well. Like uh, okay I'm here. Time is this. I'm running this. Maybe at the start of your code you might want to have output that okay I'm running at this machine. I'm running here. I'm uh, like this kind of like that the code itself will tell you what it thinks it's doing. <laughs> And that yeah. way it will make it a lot easier to like, if you run into a problem, your code crashes or you, you, it does something that you don't expect it to do. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to pinpoint at what part of the code, the problem occurred, especially yeah. if you're running it non-interactively, if you're running it interactively and let's say in Jupyter, you're running it cell by cell, mm -hmm. it's very easy to see, okay, the cell crashed, like it didn't run, like it, it, or it crashes when I try to run this cell in the mm -hmm. Jupiter, but, but if you're not, not running it interactively, you want more output and usually you want to have the program produce some debugging output for yourself. And that is something that is left for basically like we cannot like, right. Yeah. Do much for it. Like it's up to the programmers or the people yeah. who run the code to do that. So that's first thing to remember. It's good to add, like, especially at key points of your code. What is your code doing? Uh, and the second thing about, okay, did it actually use the resources? That's a different question. And that mm -hmm. the queue system can answer. Like, did it actually use what uh, it was needed? And there are a few tools that you can use. So first one that we already have touched on is the Slurm history. So if I look at the Slurm history command, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'll make this a yeah bit bigger so the font will go smaller and the will over wrap so slurm history or uh, with s act you can get the similar kind of information so from this uh, output we can also limit to let's say 15 min i think you can yes uh, yeah. Okay. So we can tell yeah. it for jobs like, in the last 15 minutes, this is what's yes. run and all the stuff. Yeah. yeah. So this so, is so, pretty standard, I guess. Yeah. So from this output, you can see stuff like, okay, what was the starting time of the job? Uh, what was the, how much memory you requested? What was the, uh, what was the actual memory usage of the job? How much? Mm -hmm. CPU time it used. So the CPU time is is basically the time it took, uh, time it like how much CPU calculation seconds it used basically, like how much actual CPU calculation it used, and the wall time is like the real clock time. So the CPU time, like let's say you ask for four CPUs, you would expect the CPU time to be four times the real time. It might be sound a bit confusing here, but but basically because you're using four CPUs yeah. for the same time you're using, so you can think about it like man hours. Like we sometimes okay, yeah, cal yeah. calculate stuff in so, man hours. So you so, have, so you how have many four man CPUs like if, working for yeah four so hours? You can, yeah, yeah. 
So if something takes 10 man hours, it takes one man 10 hours or two men five hours. Yeah. Like, because it's like a, so the TPU time is basically how many like CPU hours you, yeah. you used. I mean, and, and you yeah. can use this as, as the starting point. Another tool provided by Slurm is this SF. I make this a bit bigger now. So if you run SF and a comma, like one of your job IDs, mm -hmm. you can get this sort of an output, which tells, okay, right yeah how, so, what is the how much cpu was utilized and what was the efficiency so in the, in the case of these <laughs> example codes it's pretty yeah. bad because they don't basically do anything and the measurements might be incorrect because they're so yeah. short but mm -hmm. basically it will tell like how much cpu was used and the same with the memory so what is the memory utilize, utilization so what we talked earlier about how to decide which resources to use, well, a good point, starting point might be to request as much resource as your own computer has. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after you have run it once, then check what was actually utilized and yeah. then lower the resources. It's good to have a bit of overhead, yeah. uh, especially in the memory department, but mm -hmm. not too much. So like maybe a few gigabytes overhead or something like that. There's a really good question. How reliable is the SF in history utilized resource estimate? That's a great question because like the, the memory utilization is only measured every like uh it depends every on the few, cluster. Yeah, every but... every twenty seconds or something. But also like like in the yeah, and it depends how the measurement is recorded. So our measurement is recorded using so these so-called control groups, which is a technical thing, but but basically <laughs> it should record it quite accu accurately, oh. at least the maximum number. Did but we the switch, average is... Did we switch to control groups now? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. The 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 at least the maximum uh, requirement maximum. Uh, maximum memory requirement should be pretty accurate. But mm -hmm. the others, because they're calculated from averages, uh, they might be all like, yeah, it, it's yeah. their averages. So they might not be like, you might have a code that yeah. let's say it requests a huge amount of memory when it loads a data set or something. And then it like does nothing with that afterwards. Yeah. So you might have a situation where you have a big spike in your memory usage mm -hmm. and these averages don't necessarily capture that. For that, you need to do a bit more like profiling yeah. of the code uh, to capture that sort of okay. behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And monitoring is really a big deal, like getting good, accurate measurements of the resources your jobs use is really necessary to get any good performance out. And there's far more things that we can do that we can talk about now. But anyway, I'd propose we go to an exercise time. So yeah. we can take the break by 10, 50, or a bit after. Yeah. So in the exercises we have for you, uh, we have a few exercises, uh, like first, like some verbosity exercises, and then t testing out, like checking the, how that's, how do the SF and uh, and their slum history, what, what do they look like when you actually run something? So of course, these yeah. are pretty much a toy problem, but, but you can try them out and yeah. and see what the SF looks like. Because for an actual program, they will look pretty much the same, the utilization and those sort of numbers. Yeah. OK. Uh, I've written this in the notes now. Um, so yeah, give it a try. I wrote down we can come back at 50. So, good luck and see you soon. Bye. Welcome back. So, um, yeah, I don't know how many people were trying the exercises because there wasn't much comment there, but there's definitely some questions about this. 
Um, did we we already talked about how reliable the estimates were, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Should we do some examples? There's yeah, this question let's do some on... how to ex yep. execute the command run pi dot sh file. Where did that come from? Um. Mm. I think uh, this SSH file, I don't know, like this. Maybe it means SSH. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it means SSH. Yeah. We would need a bit more uh, verbose output, probably, or verbose uh, example. Yeah. OK, well, let's do yeah, some examples. Doing... So yeah. what should we look at? Monitoring yeah. one? Yeah. So. Uh, like these these examples might might seem a bit like okay, like they might be simple or self evident or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but uh, I would say that they are only simple and self evident because the program is simple and self evident. But, and like uh, if you think about if you if we would be running some really complex program, uh, it would be very much harder to to decipher what's happening there and like for the simple program it's of course easy to see but it's uh for a more uh complex program um yeah like like this is by no means self evident and and when when yeah so so i i think it's important to keep in mind that like even though these might look simple they like you can like whatever there and it would be like immediately much complex much more complex if the script would be much more complex mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so in the serial uh serial example yeah so, so pi yeah so if we if we run look look some for example look at the run pi at this age so let's we can add here there was already this hello user but let's add here like some echo that says uh starting analysis now very simple and let's put maybe the the date there as well okay yeah yeah. And question add, mark maybe in add, add brackets. Yeah, I'll add an extra the date yeah. command. Yeah, so yeah. we you can also write it like this if you want to utilize yeah. the the automatic highlighting a bit better. So or automatic, yeah. so it, it it shows that this is a command. Mm -hmm. So let's submit this and yeah. So let's say if we would have okay. a problem in the. Uh, uh, oh, oh I, I may oh, still have yeah. the error there. there is... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That yeah. <laughs> and let's look at the output. Yeah. So we would have here the timestamp. So this might be really helpful if your program has like tens of steps, multiple steps. Having something like that might be really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's try this set X as well. So this is very good for debugging. So if we open the script and we, not that script, <laughs> sorry. Uh, if we open the run.py, uh, or runpy, and we put here set X, what that does is that it tells the, uh, sorry, minus X. Minus, uh, yeah. It tells the, the bash interpreter to print all of the commands that we are going to be running. So if you have, especially if you have like any sort of like if sentence or something like that, like conditional logic, it might be good to, to have this because then you can see what the script is actually like executing. Um, so it will produce um, this kind of an output where yeah. we will see first the, the command that is being run Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
the, the output. output. So yeah, yeah. So you can see that before it could run the echo, the script needed to run the date. So it has these double pluses over here. So it first needed to get the date before it could print mm -hmm. this echo. So yeah. so that's yeah. why we have this double plus over here. Yeah. So you can and use that to uh yeah to produce extra monitoring. Let's maybe check the SF. Uh, okay. Example. Uh, should we should we do straight up? Like we can all like uh, tomorrow we'll talk about how to do multi processing. Uh, so maybe we can do like uh, this example. So as a, as this kind of like a teaser on how do we utilize uh, yeah. or can utilize multiple processes processors. So let's uh, let's add CPUs. So task two Python and how many zeros are there? Well, I don't want to count. Let's just okay. Yeah, let's just let's just copy paste. Okay. So error. Uh, oh, Python oh yeah, three. there's no yeah Python three. Yeah. A bit of a mistake. Okay, that should be fixed. Yeah. So now it's using two processors to do the calculation. And so we'll talk about parallelism tomorrow. So then we'll have a lot more stuff on that. <clears throat> but for now, let's just marvel at the uh, at the ease of use of multiple processors yeah. <laughs> in, in this example. So. Okay, yeah. Let's see how long it takes. I would expect it the default would be set, but it's yeah, it okay, didn't take so that long. It's done. And if we do so, a storm history, yeah, now we I should see something system. interesting. So yeah, I make this a bit yeah. So the CPU so, time and wall time is what we want, right? Yes, I'll put here the fifteen min as well. It's still oh, let's long. say five min. Yeah. <laughs> One minute. Long. Well, let's. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Still... There we go. So. So okay. Here we see the the code. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the job that we are uh, submitted. Yeah. And we see that the CPU time, total CPU time, was. Uh, One minute and fourteen seconds. And the wall time was thirty eight seconds. Mm -hmm. So now you can like there was a question in the notes that like some site doesn't have SF installed. You can get it from GitHub. It's available there, uh, and I think it's part of some Slam installations as well. But um, but the what what Slurm, uh, what the SF basically does is that calculates uh, this num like this number multiplied by the number of CPUs. So that would be 38 seconds times two. So uh, what's it like? Uh, 78 seconds, uh, so, sorry, 76 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what we utilized was uh, one minute, 14 seconds. So that's like 74 seconds. So 74 seconds over 76 seconds. We would expect the CPU efficiency to be well close to what's it like, like close yeah. to hundred mm -hmm. percent. So let's let's use SF to do this calculation so that we don't have to do it manually. Yeah. So yeah, it's ninety seven percent. Okay. Uh, yeah. The utilization, but that's basically the kind of calculation it it does. So it mm -hmm. takes the wall time, the total num time that the job took. It checks how much resources were actually requested, how many CPUs were requested. Yeah. It will calculate uh, calculate the total amount of time used, uh, and and then it, it checks how much CPU time was actually utilized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can see here that the memory utilization is is pretty horrendous. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like th this is not nice. Yeah, like, or like like it's it's way overkill. Uh, it like at one gigabyte, it doesn't really matter. Like it's it's still quite small the memory requirement. Yeah. But but the CPU efficiency was pretty good. Yeah. But okay. like these kind of like okay, 
you have an assumption how your program behaves. Like, how do you see it in the numbers? This is a quite complex task, actually. And, and like, something that you only get familiar the more you do the, the thing. But yeah. basically, it's easier to check usually if numbers are like, if the percentages are closer to 100%, then mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's easier to check like that. Yeah. Okay, so it's time for a break. So we'll be out for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll have some, well, basically lightning talks on several other things, which we summarize, but you need to read yourself. And then, um, and then there's a very long Q&A session and you can really ask us anything. Yeah. So prepare all and... your questions, bring your friends, whatever, and try to challenge us. Yeah, and during the Q&A session, like remember, like already you can pre pepper whatever questions you have, like what yeah. sort of questions you have, you can already like have them in your mind. So mm -hmm. yeah, but let's have a break. Yeah, okay, 10 minutes, see you later.